So far, no one could change how the food chain works during the entire existence of life on the planet. Herbivores eat plants, predators eat herbivores, and then turn into fertilizer for fresh grass when they die. But there are herbivores that can throw predators down from the top. How? Let's find out. On the left, you can see the mouth of a lion. On the right, the mouth of a monkey. Hardly anyone will be surprised if I say lions are simply born to kill. Their entire body is designed to make them perfect hunters. As for the primates, you can't really say this about them. Or maybe the monkeys simply do not realize what they are capable of. To understand just how badly we underestimate primates, let's make a simple comparison. Gorilla versus Lion, the largest modern primate against the king of beasts. The vast majority of gorillas are herbivores, whereas lions are carnivores. At the same time, gorillas can weigh more than 440 pounds, compared to lions who weigh only about 440 pounds. Lions have been known to take down prey up to 990 pounds, while gorillas, well, they feed on plants that generally don't fight back. At the same time, primates have very powerful jaws and strong teeth, which are necessary for grinding up branches and bark. You cannot eat food like that without growing strong teeth. Yes, a gorilla bite is less strong than that of a lion, but we're not done yet. Gorillas have a thick coat designed to protect them from a cold climate, but it can also protect them from shallow strikes or bites. It's something like the armor that evolution gave gorillas just so they would not get cold. Lions have little to show in this regard, except perhaps their mane. But most importantly, gorillas are incredibly strong. Seriously, have you ever seen their arms? On average, a gorilla is between four to nine times the strength of a human. To give you an idea of what it looks like, here's a simple example. They can lift up to 1,760 pounds and effectively throw with nearly 990 pounds of force. That is, one gorilla can lift a whole bunch of lions. Okay, okay, I think rhinos could do it too, but that doesn't make them cooler than predators, right? Perhaps. But gorillas have other advantages. Aside from strength, they have stamina, which lions clearly lack. They run well only in short sprints, get tired quickly, need rest. But you must admit, this sounds a little weird. I mean, we're comparing a predator and a big ape that feeds on, well, leaves. How can you get strong and buff with a diet like that? Well, first of all, the answer lies in heredity. Their genes, as well as the structure of their bones, allow their bodies, especially their arms, to be strong enough to survive in the harsh jungle environment. In addition, gorillas walk on four limbs, swing on branches, and put their bodies through other physical stress. They can also digest cellulose. That is, they use plant fibers completely. Other herbivores simply can't do that. So gorillas have strong teeth, strong muscles, stamina, thick hair, and intelligence as a bonus. Looks like that's all you need to kick predators from the top of the food chain. But herbivores, including gorillas, are in no rush to swap places, for example, with lions. Why, though? Maybe the reason is that animal behavior is simply hardwired by nature. A serious event must happen for an herbivore to become a predator. More serious than just knowing that you're stronger than the lion. Hey! Here's a simple example. According to evolutionary psychology, for a while, early animals that inhabited our planet did not have time to respond to all threats in time. To prevent them from dying out, nature gave them the opportunity to flee without thinking about it. It kind of added a basic function. We can say that now herbivores don't decide whether to flee from predators or fight back, they act almost on instinct. And if your life is on the line, you usually don't fight back when you're rescued, even if you do it yourself. All this was supposed to save herbivores from certain death, well, at least in most cases. But the thing is, some of them are more than capable of fighting back predators that hunt them. These herbivores are slightly stronger. I'm not talking about gorillas now, they don't encounter lions in the wild, which means they won't pick a fight with each other. But when it comes to the African buffaloes, they're called the natural enemies of lions for a reason. It's believed they took more lion lives than any other animal. In a one-on-one -on -one battle, wildcats simply stand no chance. Buffaloes weigh about three to four times more than lions and have extremely thick and dense ribs that work almost like armor. They protect the chest and organs from sharp teeth and claws. In addition, buffaloes are aggressive animals that don't give up without a fight, using its massively thick neck, head, and horns. The African buffalo can toss the attacking lions several dozen feet through the air. These animals also always help each other out, and as soon as a predator attacks one buffalo, the rest will immediately step in. No wonder that lions sometimes have to climb trees to stay safe. 
But this doesn't always help. An angry buffalo is ready to wait several hours underneath a tree to get its revenge. Despite all this, sometimes the African buffaloes still run away from the lions. Is it due to a triggered instinct or some subconscious fear? In terms of logic, this is completely pointless because buffaloes could completely exterminate the lions if they wanted. Which wouldn't work for zebras, they hardly have a chance to take down at least one pride. But still, sometimes something switches in the head and… Okay, zebras are a different story. But I wasn't kidding. If buffaloes realized how much stronger they are than the predators attacking them and joined forces, the lions would not survive this war. See for yourself. Today there are about 500,000 buffaloes and only about 20,000 lions in Africa. Given that predators can only kill one buffalo if they attack together, they stand no chance. It's a guaranteed extinction. What happens if the buffaloes win? Let's say they got rid of all the predators that could possibly harm them. Will their life become like heaven? Well, not really. Basically, buffaloes for the plants are like lions. That is, while the herbivores were busy fighting the predators, the plants fought the herbivores. The buffalo might share the same fate as lions. You just have to wait. Plants have come a long way to become as diverse as they are today. To be honest, at first they all looked like moths. See, it's an oak tree. And this is a pine tree. And that's a baobab. But over time, plants, like everything else on this planet, went through changes. There are several theories why this happened. Many studies confirm plants struggled with each other. In order to get more light, they grew upwards. To extract useful substances from the earth, they grew roots. However, there is another theory which also makes sense. The plants have become taller and stronger to avoid being eaten. Let me give you a simple example. If you're a thin, young tree, there's a high chance that some deer will stumble upon you and gnaw off all the leaves, and even break the trunk. It's hardly pleasant. But this same deer could hardly handle a huge oak tree. He just won't reach the crown. I wouldn't be surprised to find out that trees that grew during the time of the dinosaurs did that. Giant sequoias can grow up to 330 feet tall. It's possible they've grown so tall to stay safe from dinosaurs. And most likely, they achieved their goal. Argentinosaurus is considered one of the largest ancient dinosaurs which remains have been discovered. According to some estimates, its length could reach 130 feet. But even if this giant stood on its tail, it still wouldn't reach the top of a huge tree. Score one for the plants and zero for the animals. And by the way, dinosaurs went extinct. While well, sequoias are still there. But plants must not win this battle. Not because I don't like them for some reason. It's just that the last time when there were too many plants, it had consequences for the entire planet. Literally. About 470 million years ago, the first plants appeared on Earth. It was mainly moss and the like, and 35 million years later, ice sheets briefly covered most of the planet. A mass extinction ensued. Coincidence? Could be. But then carbon dioxide levels probably fell sharply. The researchers believed the plants were to blame, and that makes sense. Simply put, it turns out that carbon dioxide warms up the planet, but plants absorb it to produce oxygen. Do you understand what would happen if too many plants appeared in a short span? Based on the data available to scientists, it's not the last ice age caused by moss. Researchers already suspect that the rise of vascular plants during the Devonian period, that is about 100 million years later, triggered another ice age. So having many trees is of course healthy and beneficial for the Earth, but all in good measure. Nobody wants to fight for the planet with creatures that can cause global cooling. See you later.